This video will cover how to do the one sample test of proportions in R and show you how to implement it for one tailed and two tailed tests. So the, the one sample test of proportion is designed for the scenario where you have some sort of subpopulation that you're interested in and you're trying to see how they compare to the whole population and in this case, you have to know the value of uh, the population parameter for the, the, the entire population. And your, your inference is basically between the subpopulation and the whole population. So let's see how to do the test. Uh, as I've always done in these tutorials, I'm going to be using the 2016 wave of the general social survey. So I'm going to just load that. And the test that we're gonna be running in, in this video has to do with uh, looking at patterns of support for either Mitt Romney or Barack Obama in the 2012 election, which is the most recent election available in the 2016 GSS. So the first thing that I recommend doing when you're uh, running these tests is just look at a simple frequency distribution for the variable of interest. And so in this case, I'm going to type GSS dollar sign pres12 inside of the table command, and that will just give us our simple frequency distribution. So you can see that 1,082 people voted for Obama, uh, 591 voted for Romney, and then there were some other candidates and people that didn't vote. What we're trying to do then is see whether this, uh, this 591, uh, whether that is a statistically significant difference relative to the 47.2% um, of people that voted for Romney in the presidential election. Now, since that's already happened, we know the value uh, of the parameter there easily because it was just the total amount of support that Romney actually got. And so again, what we're trying to do then is to see whether the GSS has an underrepresentation or overrepresentation of Romney supporters. Um, that might have implications for the way that we understand variables like political preferences, attitudes to abortion, and so on. Okay, so now that we have the information that we need, we can go through and run the test. And the major uh, command that we use for these is prop.test. Um, and then you basically set up everything inside. So you can see in the pop-up there that we have X, N, P, alternative, and some other stuff that I'll get into as we move along here. Um, the first thing that I would actually recommend is to assign an object for your test. So I'm here gonna call it Romney test gets the result of prop test. So whatever it is that we end up passing to prop test will be assigned to this Romney test object that we're gonna make. So the first thing that we need to do is specify the frequency of cases that are coded as positive or in the affirmative for our particular implementation. And so here, that's 591. So you might actually expect that you're putting in the proportion here, uh, but you're not. You're just putting in the frequency and R does the proportion calculation for you internally. And so the way that you would set this up is just say x equals 591, right? Just like that. So we're checking Romney support, so 591. Next, we need to type n, which is the total number of cases that you have here. And so in this case, we have 1082 plus 591 plus 42 for the other candidates plus 15 for everybody else. And then from there, I'm gonna actually just go down to a new line so you can see everything easily. Uh, the next thing that you need to do is put in your population proportion using p, so p equals, and then in this case, as I said before, we know that in the general election in 2016, 47.2% of the electorate favored Romney, so in proportion, that would just be 0 0.472. The other thing that we need to do for this test is make a determination whether we're going to use something called Yates correction for continuity, and the default in R is that that is toggled on. Um, depending on how you're learning this material um, and who's teaching it to you, there might be different conventions uh, for what to do with Yates correction. If you're one of my students, um, my convention is to just turn it off because we're always going to have enough of a sample size for this that it's not uh, necessary. So the way that you would set that up here is just to do correct equals and then a logical false. So all uppercase, no quotes and that will just turn off the Yates correction. And that's everything that we need now to run our test. So I'm gonna just highlight those two lines and I can use a multi-line command here, by the way, because I've kept my uh, parentheses open. And then I'm gonna just run this and you can see that I have a new object popping up called Romney test. And now if I wanted to actually see the results of my test, I would just type Romney test 
an enter, and then it'll give me the results. And so it'll say that you had 591 out of the uh, 1,082 plus 591 plus 42 plus 15, right? So our total n. And then our null probability, which here is our population proportion, is 0.472. And so this is now returning what's called an x squared. So this is actually just a chi-squared statistic, and I'll get to that in a second, at one degree of freedom. And it has a p-value uh, that's very small, so 2.2 raised to the negative 16th power. So very, very, very small. Um, and this is a two-tailed test because we're seeing that it's not equal to here. And we'll tweak that in just a second to show you how the one-tailed tests will work. Uh, this gives you a population, I'm sorry, a confidence interval around your sample proportion. And so you can see that there's actually a major underrepresentation of Romney supporters in the general social survey because our, um, our sample proportion is around 34.16%. So not very many people relative to the 47.2% that Romney actually pulled in the general election. And so looking at this kind of generally, you could just compare the p-value to the alpha value using something like 0.05 or 0.01 or 0.001 for alpha and come to the conclusion that it's a statistically significant difference at most of the standard levels of uh, confidence. Um, but now let's turn to the x squared value because uh, this might be something surprising for you depending on um, who's teaching you this material because we usually want to, to see uh, either a z score or a t score for uh, tests of proportion but r is giving us an x squared so a chi squared value instead that's actually not that big of a deal because if you've assigned um, the test to an object like this you can actually take the square root of that x squared, which is a z-score. So here I would just type sqrt and then go into Romney test and then a dollar sign and statistic. And I'll just highlight that part and run it and you can see that it's just our chi-squared value. And so once I take the square root of that using the sqrt command, that will return my z-statistic that you're probably used to seeing. Right, so here we have a uh, a z score of 10.86303, which means that it's uh, quite a lot larger than our conventional thresholds for statistical significance of plus or minus 1.96 or something like that. And so you can see that whether you use the, um, the z scored version or if you use the p and alpha version of this, you'll get exactly the same result because they're just basically transformations of one another. Really, that's all that you need to do for these tests. Um, however, I will just show you one last little tweak that you can use. So um, we did a two-sample, a two-tailed test here, um, but let's say that we wanted to do a one-tailed test. And so all that you would need to do is use the, uh, the optional argument alternative, and then you can put either less, um, if you wanted to test whether your subgroup population was less than the whole sample, um, or you could do greater, for the opposite, so your subpopulation has a larger value than the whole population, or the default is two dot sided, uh, which will return the two-tailed test. So whichever way you want to do it, it's fine. So here I'm going to just check whether uh, Romney support is less in the general social survey relative to the whole population, which as we've already seen is true. And now I have uh, updated my Romney test object and to see the results, all you need to do is just type it in again run it and then you'll see that um, of course this is still statistically significant we still have the same um, chi-squared value which you could just take the square root of and then you could get um, the, uh, the z-score right so I'll just copy and paste what's on 11 down just to show you it still works run it and there you go you're still back to your 10.86303